Hey guys, welcome back. Well, we covered the cooling system and the oil system, so today we're going to go over our planned upgrades for the fuel system. So, as you can see, there's basically no fuel system in the car now, except for like the gas tank. But I'm going to give you guys a quick rundown of where we're at and what we're going to run moving forward. I'll give you a little prerequisite. This car has had like five or six different fuel systems over the years. And I think this is kind of inevitable, like cars get faster and technology gets better. And every so often you just have to rip out the stuff you did and upgrade again. It's like turbos. You know, the turbos that everybody was running in 2005 are not competitive with what people run today. Same thing with like ECUs, engine management, and all kinds of stuff. You know, parts get better. So over time you got to upgrade. So I have a pretty badass fuel system as far as Miatas go. I had a... Uh... Yeah, so what we're ripping out, we have twin pumps... We have twin 10 gauge wires going into the tank. Everything's 10 gauge. We had a pair of 50 amp relays. And again, 10 gauge wires going straight to the battery. We had a big battery, upgraded battery wires. So, I mean, these things are getting healthy. I measured the voltage drop. It was less than one tenth of a volt at a uh, full pressure. Uh, so it's, it was a very, it was, it was working well. Although the way it looks aesthetically, like, you know, you can look at this and be like, oh, look, these wires are labeled and stuff. That's cool. But then you look at, like, the connectors. I mean, these are, you know, it's what you'd think. Look, you can see the copper poking out of that. Eh, looks a little chintzy, you know. This is decent wire, but it's not really, I don't think this is actually, yeah, I mean, it says it's, like, gasoline and oil resistant. But anyway, you know, that wire sucks. I don't want that. So we're redoing all this. So let me show you what we're going to do. We're going to keep this sending unit, but we're going to clean this up. So this is like the factory return. Don't worry about how these hoses are hooked up. This is just, uh, anyway, that's the factory return. That's the supply. You can see this bulkhead fitting like wobbles because, you know, something's a little ghetto. But we're going to redo that. Um, we're going to, I'm not sure how we're going to do this yet, but I want these fittings welded to this. I want it to be like one piece. So... That part seems, seems straightforward. Just clean up all the coating off of this and weld on a bung and then paint it or something so it doesn't rust. But how to connect it on the inside to the new pump, eh, that's to be determined. So we got a little work to figure out, but we're going to have an 8AN bung coming out and probably another 8AN for the return. And then we're going to keep these four posts over here for the wires. Uh, let's see, after that... Yeah, I'll tell you what, before we start going forward, let's talk about the fuel pump pumps. So right now we got a Walbro 450 and a Dutchworks 300 in there. I used to have twin 450s and one of them died and I swapped out of Dutchworks and then the Dutchworks died. <clears throat> so we're upgrading the pumps too. We're going to go with this guy. We already bought it. Uh, BKS 1000. So from TI Automotive. So this is a fancy pump. It's a brushless DC motor, and it's just one pump, and I'll show you. But this isn't just any fuel pump. This is actually the fuel pump for a Veyron. No joke. Um, and there's a few reasons we did this. One is for the reliability, I think, or we hope. This is a Veyron fuel pump, so it's got four wires. It's got a brushless DC motor inside. And one of the reasons we did this is this should be OEM reliable. You know, they put this in a production car. I haven't had as good a luck with these aftermarket pumps. So I'm hoping that this one is more reliable than those. It also has all these crazy electronics. I'm not really going to unbox this, but <clears throat> it's got four wires coming out for the pumps, two wires going in to power it. And it's like this big, it looks like a little amplifier. So that's the electronics that run the pump, little install kit. But uh, here's the thing. This one pump is actually fairly compact. Like it's bigger than probably a Walbro pump but it's not that big of a pump. And the great thing about this one pump is, there's actually a few great things. One, you only have to install one pump instead of two, so it's way easier to fit this into the uh, sending unit. <clears throat> Another one, that single pump will produce more fuel than a pair of Walbur 450s. <clears throat> I'm trying to remember, I can't, I'm not up to date on all the, I can't, I forget all this stuff. But they make like a Walbro 540 or 550 or whatever it is now. They make a better one or a 525. It's better than the 450s. 450s were the hot stuff when I put this in the car. But even the new pumps, like two of those, are still not as good as the pump I just bought. 
And the last thing to keep in mind is that the pump I just bought is better than I'm telling you. This pump is limited by the electronics running the pump. There's a company, I can't remember the details, but there's somebody that claims that with the right electronics, this pump is good for like 3,000 horsepower. That sounds absurd. Like, how could any one fuel pump that small and electric be good for 3,000 horsepower? I don't know. But supposedly it is. <clears throat> it's like, an, you know, so I could be an electronics upgrade. Next time I need to upgrade my fuel system, instead of changing the pump, like the next time I run out of pump, instead of changing the pump, I might be changing the electronics. So, anyway. But yeah, so we're running this pump because it's one pump and it's very high flow. And there's a third reason, efficiency. I, I'm going from memory, but I believe this pump only pulls like 16 amps, delivering its crazy performance. For reference, the pumps in this car pull, I want to say 40 amps, something around 40 amps to get the performance out of these that I get. It takes about 40 amps or so, or 50 amps or whatever it is. It's a bunch. The power draw is really high. These pumps are basically loud and inefficient. So it heats the fuel up too, which is kind of bad because then you can get into, that creates a whole nother can of worms and your fuel starts heating up. You start having to stage your pumps and anyway, that can be a whole nother thing. So that's the reason we got this pump. It was expensive and I don't really like buying expensive stuff like that. But anyway, we decided the benefits were worth it. This took, we knocked about a solid 20 amps off of our electrical load on the car. And that happened to be very valuable because we just... That's something else we struggled with, and I was like, you know, I can pay money to take electrical load off the car. That's very valuable. Even if this didn't upgrade my fuel system in any other way, just saving power is really valuable because I have fought this thing trying to keep all the electronics running at full voltage. So, so that's a huge benefit. So anyway, that's our pump. <clears throat> so that covers the pump. That covers the sending unit. Then what? Well, previously we had these push lock fittings. So they look like this. They're... Flex lock made in USA. This stuff's good for pretty high pressure, a few hundred PSI, I think. And you can see this is what it looks like. And this works fine, but I just, we're, we're upgrading this. So these are 6 a.m. And that may be enough, but we're going to go 8 a.m. <clears throat> I kind of, it looks better, it's bigger, and it's more future proof. Even though I think I could probably hit my power goals with 6 a.m., I'd rather just do 8. It'll look better, and I don't have to worry about it. Then I know it's good. And it should be good for like future upgrades if I ever decide to turn up the power or whatever. It's just something I don't have to worry about. So we're going to do an 8 a.m. bulkhead fitting of some type. And then we'll have 8 a.m. hose. I've never pulled the gas tank. I'm not sure. I'm probably not going to do that now either. But somehow we're going to get a hose routed through there under the car. But what I'd like to do, this is kind of a, a maybe. I really wanted to run stainless hard lines where I could. And I've kind of looked into it. I think we could pull it off. It's a, it's a little bit of a headache. Okay, it's a headache. Running a hose is way easier than running a hard line. But I'm pretty tempted to do it. I've got a... Oh, I think I got... I think I actually have the tool. You have to, to do a hard line with like AN. So it'd be a hard line, but it'd be an AN hard line. So those are a 37 degree flare. And I'm pretty sure somewhere I have a flare tool. It's probably on the camera and I just can't see it. Uh, that's it. This guy. Yeah, this, I'm pretty sure it's from Rigid. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this thing does 37 degree flare. And that's why we bought it. So, I could make my own hard lines <clears throat> and flare them myself and all that. And we may do that. It'd be kind of cool to do that. But it's a maybe right now because that's going to have time and <clears throat> it's something I don't have... A whole lot of experience with well i've done it but yeah i want this to look i don't want to do it for the sake of it i want it to be done right and i want it to look good and we may just run a hose for now and then go back and do hard lines later also it'd be easier to do hard lines if the gas tank rear suspension and the motor were out of the car so that's another reason we may just run a hose but anyway whatever it is we're gonna get a big fat an hose or hard line or whatever gets up here to the front of the car it'll probably come up either back there or up here. I kind of want it to come up back here because, you know, it gets rid of uh, sending fuel all the way to the front and then to the back. It's like, just bring it up right there. So that's an engineering thing. We'll see what we can do if we can, if we can make that work. But uh, after that, let's see, we're going to have a new fuel rail. This guy, Radium, 
So this seems to be the hot fuel reel to get. I'm pretty beefy. This is a, uh, you can see the size of my fingers and then the hole going through this thing. It's a uh, pretty wide open. That's at least, that's almost a half inch hole going through the center. And you can actually feed this from both ends, which I don't know if we're going to do that, but you could. And I have no idea what that's for, but apparently there's a hole there. Probably going to have to plug that. Hmm, interesting. Anyway, big fat fuel rail. Looks pretty cool. It's beefy. Again, I kind of like how it looks, the aesthetics. Like, see how big the rail is compared to my thumb? Let me show you what the... Oh, this is kind of embarrassing. I'll show you the rail that was on this car. It was uh, a little bit ghetto fabulous. So... There's the old rail. So this worked. As bad as this looks, I ran 500 wheel on E85 with this rail and never blew my engine up. But I basically, I forget what rail this is. I think it's the VVT rail. Had the largest flow area on the inside. That's what it was. This is a VVT one. But I had to like weld whatever that was. And then, I know this looks bad, but I welded that fitting onto this thing. This thing did not want to weld. That weld looks horrible. I had a flux core back then. And uh, anyway, that's what I ran. It, it did the job, but it looks terrible. And those are some ID1300 injectors. Probably should get those cleaned. But uh, but yeah, that's what we were running. So you can see this new rail is going to look way better. And we're, we're going to run these injectors starting off, uh, 1300s. But we're probably going to upgrade, I think. I've got some... Uh, <laughs> I have some ID 2650s or 2600s or something. They're literally double the injector of this. And uh, we're probably going to put those in the car at some point, but not starting off because that's just crazy. We're going to need to get into some crazy power levels before we actually run out of... In we will run out of injector. I've ran, I've ran these to... In fact, I've run all these and a fifth injector and ran out of fuel before. So I know we're going to run out of fuel with those. That's not, the, that's not a question, but... We're going to start off with those. We'll upgrade to the 2600s later. Uh, yeah, this is just all the stuff that's come off the car lately. So, speaking of the fuel upgrades, here's another one. This is a, this is what was on the car. It's a Aeromotive. I forget what the exact name of this thing was, but basically it's a pretty decent regulator. 6AN in and out. You can see this. We had a fitting to a fitting with a sensor. And then with a gauge screwed in with brass, which is, you know, really not appropriate for a race car. So all that crap's getting changed. We're going to buy a new regulator that's bigger. This is not really super necessary, but again, I just, I want to future-proof it. I want the fuel system to be way bigger than it needs to. I don't want to worry about it. So we're going to sell that regulator and pick up a bigger one. And we'll use that with 8 a.m. And it'll be, you know, just bigger and better. Let's see, is there anything else? I think that's about it for the fuel system. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can't really think of anything else. So that's kind of a summary of how we're gonna do the fuel system. Oh, I gotta get a fuel filter. I uh, had one, I don't even remember what filter I had. Maybe I'll keep it, but I think it's also 6 a.m. So again, it's like, you know, probably just gonna have to change it and upgrade. So I don't really, I forgot about that. Y'all yeah, have to add that to the list of things we need to get. But yeah, we'll probably pick up some kind of high flow, whatever fuel filter is appropriate for this setup. And we'll change that while we're doing it. But yeah, we're gonna put a monster fuel system in this car. Uh, something that, you know, can support a large amount of horsepower and it won't be struggling. So I could run this car, basically say I run it at 500 wheel, the fuel system will just be no big deal. Cause most people, most guys with Miatas, if you go look, people that are running three, four, and 500 horsepower, they're always running out of fuel system. And I had the same problem with this car, running out of fuel. So that's just one more thing where it's like, hey, we're going to make that overkill and quit fighting it. We'll fight something else, but we're not going to fight running out of fuel. Anyway, that's all for today. Y'all take it easy.